So good evening, good evening, good evening. Let's just readjust that. Failing to prepare is preparing to fail. And uh, that's what Arsenal have done for three years straight. But doesn't matter. At Arsenal Football Club, you get rewarded for failure. Obviously, we've already signed up Aaron Ramsdale to a new deal. We've signed up Bako Saka to a new deal. Oh, but Lee won the FA Cup. Uh, he didn't play in the final. Uh, but I'm cool with him. I'm only playing with him. He's all right. He's good. I'm chill with that. Um, but we're looking at Martin Odegaard's new contract. Why? His contract runs out 2025 with an option for 2026 to extend it. But we're going to rip that one up, give you a pay rise. Eighth professional season as a professional footballer, or eight seasons as a professional footballer. Zero trophies. Uh, here you go. Have a contract, mate. Uh, it is what it is. Uh, no doubt we'll get rid of Smith Rowe in the summer and there'll be all this hoo-ha about, oh, Odegaard number 10. Get in the bin. Uh, but now, but now, we're going to sign up Reese Nelson to a four-year contract with an option of a fifth. Why? He's a free agent. Let him go. Oh, but Lee, we're protecting his value. Uh, before we get delving right into this, smash the like button. Uh, subscribe to Lee Reacts. From, from next week, I will be uploading every single day, all through the summer on that channel, from probably Tuesday. Monday, I'll have a day off after the game on Sunday. And then from Tuesday onwards, every day you're getting free uploads on here, um, scheduled throughout the day, and you'll be getting one on the other channel. So make sure you uh, sub to Lee Reacts. That channel is flying, even though I ain't done anything on it for a couple of weeks. Uh, appreciate everyone who has subbed to that. But... Um, make sure you sub to this one as well. Road to 100k is fully on. What phase am I in? Uh, let me know. Uh, but anyway, uh, Eddie and Ketia last season was out of contract. We signed him up, gave him the king's number and 100 grand a week. And it's almost like we haven't learned our lessons. Or have we? Or have we? Because that was a cost-cutting exercise. Oh, let's sign Eddie up on 100 grand a week for five years. Yeah, that'll work out cheaper they're going and actually buying a top draw striker and paying him his wages. Now, we're going to do it all over again with Reese. As much as I like Reese Nelson, and I think he is actually quite a good footballer, he ain't good enough to win Arsenal a title. He ain't good enough to play full-time at Arsenal, week in, week out. He ain't even that good off the bench. Let's just be real with this. Yeah, he's, he's direct, he's dynamic, he can cross the ball, fair play to him. But ultimately, not for me. Not for me. I'd say he'd be a good, maybe a good Brighton player. Yeah, maybe a good player for a team around Brighton, Crystal Palace, like that kind of, you know, sixth to twelfth in the league kind of team. But for Arsenal Football Club, no, not for me. And listen, this is just another cost-cutting, say, money-making or money-saving exercise because we do need to go and get somebody that is better than Reese. We do need to go and get somebody that can challenge Pako Saka and Martinelli for their starting positions. And if that's not what we're going to do, why? Not one of them players in that starting 11 should be able to go into that starting 11 every week and know that no matter what, they're getting their spot. Shouldn't be like that. You should have players that are on equal level, if not better, than what we have. Are you telling me there's not another uh, right or left winger in the world that is better than Bakayo Saka, or better than Martinelli, or better than Trossard, or better than Reese? I mean, come on, really? Is this where we're going with this? Again, it's all done to keep the average age of the squad down, the English quota, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and to lower the standards again for next season. Because next season, we're in the Champions League. Yeah, oh, they've got the youngest squad in the Champions League. How about let's get the best squad in the Champions League? How about let's actually go and achieve winning something? Because for three full seasons, all we've done and all we've heard yeah, is absolute BS. It has been rubbish. And I'm getting people every day, oh, yeah, but Lee, it's called progress. Okay, let me tell you something right now about progress, yeah? Brighton have got progress. Brighton have got progress. Brighton made 80 million quid in the summer. They didn't invest it. They finished in the top six. Oh, the big six. Yeah. yeah? Well, if they'd actually spent that 80 million, they might have gone and competed for the title. And what's going to happen to them? Because I've seen this progress pro... Um, it's a process. It's a progress. All of this crap. I've seen that with Leicester City. They finished fifth twice. They won an FA Cup a couple of seasons ago. They're about to get relegated. Why? Because they didn't do what was required to stay up there and challenge even further. They were doing it on the cheap. They let their players go, etc., etc. Southampton's the same. You know, Arsenal 
should be looking at getting better players in than what we have in our starting eleven. And if that means that we have to go and spend top dollar on these players, go and spend top dollar then, mate. Yeah, because everyone's on their knees for this 159.9 million we made this season, which is, by the way, only 5 million more than we made last season when we finished fifth. When we finished fifth, we made 5 million less. So where's the incentive to go and win the title? Because last season when we finished fifth, we earned 9.7 million less than the people, the team that won it, Man City. So that 9.7 million, why would we go and do another extra 100 million on top of what we'd normally spend to go and actually go the extra mile to win 9 million more? Why? You wouldn't, would you? If you're a businessman, you're not going to spend... You're not going to spend out 100 million to get 9.7 million back higher. And this is where we're at. There's only one team in the Premier League that actually try to achieve the aim, and that is to win the title. We don't. We just do the bare minimum. Yeah, you've got Jurgen Klopp out here today saying, oh, yeah, you know, well, we didn't get Champions League, but we're in the Europa League. We're playing on Thursday next week. Who cares? That's it. Oh, who cares? It don't matter. We're in the Europa League. Who cares? Well, Mohamed Salah cares, mate. Mohamed Salah cares. Yeah, and this is the problem with these teams. Liverpool, their, their ownership don't care. And the managers going down the route of Wenger, yeah, in Wenger's last decade. Klopp's going down that route. He's going down that route. I can already see it. I've seen it for the last 18 months. He's going down that route. But Tottenham's owner don't care. And none of their players care. They're all talking about top four. This club don't care. Arsenal don't care. Yeah, we've got... CEOs, we've got players, we've got management, we've got the club photographer who thinks he's important, coming out telling everyone in the world, this, that and the other. Nobody is interested in winning the league, apart from Man City. And then everyone wants to cry about Man City. Oh, but what a fantastic achievement for Brighton. They've not won a top flight trophy in 121 years. Why are they getting praise? Yeah, I hope they get relegated. Yeah, their owner, by the way, is worth 1.3 billion. 1.3 billion. Yeah, same with same with other clubs. Same with other clubs in this league. Why why were people praising Crystal Palace? Well, because they played nice football. They don't win anything. No disrespect to all of these teams, by the way. But when you start the season on zero points, you play each other twice. At the end of it, one gets a medal, one gets a trophy, the rest don't, so you failed. So let's not try and dress up yeah, these, these other positions in the league as success. They're not. They're not. And what will happen next season is, for example, Brighton. Brighton are going to the Europa League after selling their best players this summer replacing them with people we've never heard of for 2 million and 5 million and 4 million. They'll have a little run, but ultimately that will cost them the league positions. So they'll finish lower down than sixth. So they won't qualify again next season. They won't win the Europa League. And all that's happened is their own is sweet because he's made another load of profit. Just sitting there for the TV money. That's it. Why do people praise this crap? Yeah, they're nice to watch. They are nice to watch. Cool. But ultimately they don't win anything. So why not watch a team that is nice to watch that wins stuff? Why don't you demand that for your club? Yeah, at the end of the day, people are trying to put Arsenal into this. Oh, but it's a progress. It's a pro. We're, we're progressing. We're the third biggest club in the country. We're the third biggest club in the country. When is it? Uh, when is it right for me to be able to call this out without any idiot chatting crap to me? Yeah, because as much as you want to waffle and do all the mental gymnastics and upside down, back to front logics, you either get a trophy or you don't. So you've either won. Or you've lost. Fourth ain't a trophy, third ain't a trophy, and second ain't a trophy. Neither is fifth, sixth, seventh. All it does is qualify you into a competition that we're not going to win anyway. I don't get it. I genuinely do not get this crap. So we're going to go into the Champions League with Reese Nelson, Eddie and Ketia, Martin Odegaard. Oh, but Lee Odegaard's had a good season. He scored against no big teams this season. Well done. 15 goals that were irrelevant. Irrelevant goals that lead to nothing are, oh yes, irrelevant. Irrelevant wins that lead to nothing. Oh yes, they're also irrelevant. I've been telling people this for years and more and more people are waking up to this. More and more people are waking up to the scam and the Ponzi scheme that is this football club, by the way. They've dropped that new kit today. Dropped the new kit today. 80 quid. If you want Saka's name and number on the back of it with the Champions League badge on it or the, or the Premier League badge on it, it's over 100 quid. For what? Why are you dropping the kit before you've signed any players? Why are you dropping the kit before the season starts? Money, money, money. Give it to me. Mr. Conkey's sitting there. <laughs> Job done. He's got all of these little minions running around doing up Lord's work to anyone who questions it. So when I call it out, I'm bombarded with thousands of thousands of these little worker bees. 
these little worker ants, little cucarachas, they're all working to give him the money. Yeah, the same owner that everyone's hashtagging out. Oh, hashtag funky out. All a load of bollocks. This club is a Ponzi scheme. And I've been telling people this for time. And the fact and reality is we will not go out there in the summer and do what's required to go and compete for the title and actually win it. I mean, actually, win. I believe we're overachieving. No, we're not. The third biggest club in the country, mate. Half a billion quid income. You're telling me that we're Barnet then? Or Brentford? No disrespect. Brentford's owners worth 30 million. How many players we've got in our squad worth more than that? Yeah? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, it does my nutting. Yeah, and I'm sick and tired of it. All these people with their standards on the floor. Oh, yeah, but Lee, we were eighth twice. Yeah, because he took us back to eighth. He took us back to eighth. We were fifth. We were fifth the season before he rocked up. Oh, but Emery left a mess. Oh, okay, cool. Well, now what we've got, apparently the culture's changed. Apparently the culture's changed at the club. The culture's changed at the football club. Okay, mate. Why is our owners, uh, sorry, why are our CEO, our manager, Rob Holding, Granite Xhaka, Smith Rowe, uh, Martin Odegaard, and the club photographer. If I missed anyone? Granite Xhaka, all coming out saying top four's the aim. But I thought the, the culture had changed, the mentality had changed. It's all about winning now. The only one who has actually come out and said, we need to win now, is Edu, of all people. Unbelievable, Jeff. Anyway, let me know your thoughts on Reese Nelson getting a four-year deal with, um, with an option of a fifth. Let me know your thoughts on why nobody else in the league bothers to take it seriously. Oh, but we can't know their financial doping. Ugh. Yeah, okay, mate. Good one. And uh, I'll be back. I'm literally uh, about, as I finish recording this, going live with rents. But obviously, when you see this, it would have been about four hours ago. So go and check that out um, on his Twitch. And I'm out of here. Adios, amigos. Arteta fuera.